Hi, I'm Paul from Paradise Northwest. Uh, today I'm going to go over painting a black gun, like an AR-10 or uh, AR-15 in this case. So uh, a lot of these guns come in black. The unfortunate thing about that is black is just not a tactical color. It's not camouflage. So uh, when I was in the military, we all painted our guns. There's several options. You can uh, put camouflage tape on it, you can spend money and get a gun coat or Cerakote or something like that on there. Um, but an inexpensive solution is just go ahead and put spray paint on there. Um, I'm going to show you how to get it on there so it sticks the best as possible. I'm going to show you how to make it effective as camouflage and at the same time kind of make it look cool. The first thing you're going to want to do is make sure it's clear and safe. So I've got a magazine in here just to keep it out of the mag well. It is clear. We're good to go. Alright, so now that it's clear and safe, what you're going to want to do is take off all the oil on your metal because the, the paint will not stick to oil. I like to use brake cleaner, but acetone or I don't know, probably even carburetor cleaner, anything that doesn't leave a, a film or residue will work. Um, just want to make sure you get it get it all off of there. Um, I'm going to keep doing this, and uh, once it's all finished, we'll come back and I'll show you how to continue prepping for paint. So right here you want to tape up any spots you don't want to paint, like uh, obviously your scope lenses, some people care about their serial number, um, some people will put some around their barrel. Uh, I like to put it right here along the trigger because uh, one of the downsides to painting your gun is it will build up underneath the trigger there and it can just get nasty sticky. That usually happens after a few paint jobs. But uh, you know once you paint your gun if you don't like the color it's pretty easy to remove. You just do it again with the brake cleaner. It'll come off. Um, even change it up for the seasons. It's kind of nice. Right now here in southeastern Washington springtime and it's a little green out but usually we're fairly brown deserty grassland type of country so a lot of green on your gun isn't really what we're going for here. <laughs> taping up your lens covers there's two different ways that I know of to do it this is one way where you wrap around the outside and then fill in the middle and then this is the other side right or the other way right here where you just fill in the middle you don't put anything on the outside of course with this way you're gonna get a, a black ring around your eyepiece this way you aren't uh, but this way is a little more risky as far as getting spray on your lens and I would not suggest using brake cleaner to clean off your lens. I'm not an optics guy, but it just doesn't seem like a good idea. Maybe it wouldn't do anything. Anyways, um, all I've got to do here is tape up my trigger. I'm going to put my mag in. I'm going to go ahead and hang this up by uh, this little zip tie here. And we're going to start going over colors and get this thing painted. All right, so here we are. We've got the uh, the AR-15 pretty much taped up everywhere I like to have it taped. Uh, I use electrical tape. I think probably masking tape works better because it doesn't stretch and stuff when you're trying to pull it off. But the spots that I taped up, I taped up the gaps around the trigger. I taped up the gaps right here around the, uh, the bolt. Release. Bolt release. Uh, the back of the mag 
release right there, front of the mag release. Um, right here, I, I put a little bit of tape around the uh, charging handle just to get the, I don't want to get a bunch of paint back in there. Um, and another thing you don't want to forget is to put tape on any lettering that's on your scope. So I, right here I have my my uh, zoom powers and now that I mention it right here I've got my uh, my focus ranges. So I'm going to go ahead and tape that up and then we're going to get to painting. Alright, so here is the spray paint I selected. You can actually buy uh, camouflage paint made for doing this, but Home Depot didn't have any, so I hear Rust Oleum's a great brand. Uh, my wife recommended it. She paints stuff. So uh, the colors I picked out are gray, my favorite camouflage color. In my opinion, it is the most uh, universal camouflage color. You've got tan, it's pretty common sand color you know we've got brown which is also a pretty common color and then that's kind of an olive green right there so that is about as green as I'm gonna go for this area if I was in the jungle maybe I'd get some brighter colored green also uh, satin versus gloss obviously gloss is glossy and shiny and things in the woods are generally not glossy and shiny. So you go with satin, which is more of a less glossy finish. Maybe matte might also be a color you could go with. So right here, I picked some grass. This is one thing I'm going to be using for stencil. You know, you got your blades right here, and you got heads up here. So we're going to see what we can do with that. Right here, I have some leaves of poison hemlock. You can use uh, pretty much any type of leaves. I like to use ones that have, you can look at this table here, you know, ones that got uh, finer features. You can use ones that have broader features. Um, also, sometimes people use netting, like mesh, uh, whatever you want, where you're not actually trying to make your gun look like a leaf. You're just wanting the colors to be broken up. So, <clears throat> We've already shaken up our cans. I'm going to go ahead and divide them up into the colors. To start off with, I am going to primarily go with brown and green because the first colors you put on the gun are actually the ones that you're going to see the least, at least with the way I paint. So I'm going to take some green. And we're going to do light coats here. You don't want to do it really heavy. Um, especially right in here. You're still going to paint this, but obviously your stock slides up and down it, and if you put too much paint on there, it gets sticky. So, what I like to do is actually do kind of a uh, an angled shot. I, I put too much paint there. I, oh, that was too heavy. I'm going to go with a, brain, uh, a brown streak. <laughs> Green. Brown. Like I said, as light as possible. I'm going to do a little bit of green here. Good bit of green there. Brown. I'm doing a uh, kind of a diagonal stripe here just because when you're holding it up you're not wanting uh, right angles things that look man-made um, another rule of thumb as far as camouflage goes if you can break up this shape a good thing to do might be put a uh, non patterning color going 
going in a streak right here, even if it was like a dark brown, that dark brown streak right there is going to actually divide the gun up into two pieces and it's going to be a lot less apparent as a gun from distance, which is really what you're going for. Anybody standing three feet away is probably going to recognize this as a gun. But somebody looking at you through binoculars from 500 yards away is going to have a lot harder time picking this up as a gun as opposed to a black gun. Another thing is if you have a lot of exposed barrel and you shoot a lot of, you know, if, if you're going on, you know, if you're dumping three or four mags at a time through the gun, your barrel's going to heat up enough to actually change the color of your paint, which is kind of unfortunate, especially when it turns pink. <clears throat> this is what we're doing here. This is kind of the base color here. You can go ahead and do a mag, no reason not to. Um, and I'm being careful not to uh, overspray. Light coats are better, and then you can do another light coat on top of it. And I am uh, being careful not to leave any black. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other side the exact same way I did this, and then we're going to get into some stenciling. All right, so now we've uh, we've let the paint dry. We've got brown and green just kind of overlapped here. Functionally, this right here would work. Uh, this is uh, definitely tactically camouflaged. Uh, but to add a little bit and to make it look cool to all your friends, if you're that kind of guy, what we're going to do, we're just going to do some stencil painting here. We've got <laughs> the tan. I like this shade of tan. And uh, like I say, a busy leaf here. The trick is you want to hold the leaf or the grass or whatever it is that you're stenciling fairly close to the metal and just a quick quick shot and you see the stencil there and we're definitely doing light bursts nothing heavy Also try to, uh, with leaves like this, I like to not put them all going the same direction. With grass, you do generally want them to kind of go all the same direction if you're going to just have a bunch of stripes because that's the way grass lays, you know. Anyways, this is pretty much what you're going for. You can get creative and use any type of stencils. Uh, the good thing about it is it doesn't have to be great to be uh, efficient in the battlefield as far as being camouflaged. Pretty much once it's painted and it's not black and it kind of breaks up the main color of it, then uh, you're good to go and everything beyond that is just, just for being cool. So here is uh, here's a little stencil I made. Unfortunately, there's not really a piece of, of metal large enough to put a cool stencil like that. You know, I could try it on that butt stock. I've got this shade of gray. I'm not crazy about this gray here. It kind of seems battleship, but... Um, Ooh, almost did the flag backwards. Stars forward. Yeah, it didn't really work out. But it's not a big deal. Uh, put the grass here. Just taking a couple pieces. I don't want to be too busy here. Just a, a couple uh, blades really is probably what I'm going to look for here. Hold it up. 
a little bit of grass, and uh, just, just rent it out, holding it over, and just hitting it just real quick. Not crazy about this gray, but I think this gun right here is decently camouflaged, and that's what the other side looks like. So, anyways, we're gonna take the tape off and take a picture, and uh, hope you guys learned something. That's how you. Camouflage and AR-15. Thanks for watching.